what would crystalline life be like? Now, at first, you might think crystals are an unlikely candidate for life. I mean, they're really simple. Even alternative life are the type we've discussed before, but let's think more about it. Crystals can grow like living things. Of course, they grow in a different manner by accretion onto the outside. Their internal core doesn't change. Crystals can reproduce too. I can take a crystal, I can shatter it in the right solution, and each tiny fragment will be the center of a new crystal, stimulating growth along its axes. Now again, this doesn't seem to be the same technique used by other living things. We don't reproduce by shattering into pieces, except some living things do reproduce in this way. You can cut a planarian worm in half, and each part becomes a new worm. The hydroorganism works the same way. You can literally take a living sponge, chop it into tiny pieces, and each piece organizes itself into a tiny new sponge. That's pretty much exactly what a crystal does when it's shattered in the right environment. So can we imagine a super complex crystal acting as life of some sort? Well, obviously my answer is yes. I don't know all the details, but how would it operate? Well, if we had such a thing, for one thing, a crystal isn't likely to have internal organs like animals do. But not all living things have organs. Mushrooms don't. Sponges don't, even though they are actual animals. And anyway, a crystal entity is not life as we know it. My belief is that a crystal would operate by electric power. You know, the same way that humans do. Our nervous systems are electric. It's easy to imagine a crystal entity that had different resistances and pathways inside of it in which highly complicated magnetic or electric charges resided. Now, crystals were used in the original radio sets. We use them in electronics all the time. What's piezoelectricity is based on when you compress them, that makes electricity. They're used in oscillators. They're used in all kinds of things. They have amazing electronic properties. So are crystalline beasts could have incredibly precise and super complex circuitry to substitute for the lack of what we'd recognize as true organs. So the obvious question comes up, how could it move? Well, we could posit joints, but it also turns out that crystals can actually bend. This is a picture of a crystal that has been tied in a knot. It turns out that a crystal can be flexible plus retain traditional properties. And it's possible to grow elastic crystals that you can bend again and again. Scientists have made these. Admittedly, we can currently only produce these things as narrow as a string and only a few inches long, but we've just started. An organism that had evolved over the course of millions or billions of years would be much further down this path. So what could such a living thing do? How would it exist? Well, it would have to grow by accretion like other crystals, which means it would have a core body that was unchanged. Since its mental power is based on its electric currents, and this depends on size, the bigger it gets, the smarter it gets. This actually maps to organic beings like ourselves. Bigger animals have more potential for being smart. An elephant is able to be smarter than a mouse or an ant. It's no guarantee, but it's the general trend. Now, how would a crystal feed? Well, I guess it would have to literally bathe in nutrient fluids with the right minerals. It would also need a source of, light, of energy, and that could be piezoelectricity. Now, piezoelectricity is the electric charge that accumulates in crystals to, in response to mechanical stress. In other words, for our crystals, simply by moving, they would create electricity within their bodies. So they might be quite active which is sort of the opposite of what you might assume about a crystal creature. They have to move all the time to have more electricity. How would it reproduce? Well, presumably, like other crystals, it would shatter itself. One feature of crystals is that when they get bigger, they get more delicate, they get more easily broken, flaws accumulate. So here we have the tragic paradox of the crystal bean. It needs to reach a certain size to reproduce properly. As it does so, it gets smarter and smarter. But as it gets smarter, it becomes likelier and likelier to break apart. It gets closer to its death by shattering. But there's more applications. Is it really death? When a crystal breaks, all the parts are in a sense still the original crystal. So would they all have the same personality or behavior, though individually less intelligent than the parent? Maybe it hasn't really died. It's just scattered not only its body, but its intelligence over an area. Is it immortal? Consider single-celled organisms like bacteria or amoebas. These reproduce by fission. One entity splits into two. Did the original creature die? Which one of the daughter cells is the real amoeba? Both? 
neither? Are amoebas or bacteria immortal? The answer has to be on some level, yes, they're immortal. Our crystal organism is immortal too when it shatters, but it also loses intelligence. And I assume as the individual particles grow, they'll accumulate their own little flaws and quirks and become different from each other. Now here's a crystal organism I invented for my game Hyperspace. I call it the Zepseg, but probably it would communicate with radio waves since it is made of crystal. And so it wouldn't actually use words to communicate with itself. Since I am an organism that uses sound waves, however, I have to call it something. You can see this organism is carved, so it seems to have a head plus decorative parts. I don't think a crystal really has a head. I've made it look attractive, but here's my thinking. Crystals are bound to be super sensitive to the thoughts and actions of others. Since another being even just touching a crystal or changing the saturation in an environment affects that crystal's growth and development. Further, think of the crystal being. It's smart when it's large, but it keeps growing over time, getting closer and closer to shattering a death. It can't shrink to a smaller safe size by itself, but it can carve hunks off of its outside, making it smaller. This might also make it slightly less intelligent, but it could keep the most important pathways deep inside it. This means that it could carve itself into attractive shapes. The crystal bean, since it's so sensitive, knows this will affect the way other beans look at it. A crystal bean who needs to deal with humans will want to be a shape pleasant to humans. So it would carve itself into a shape we humans like. That's what it's doing. Now eventually, it would have to reproduce by shattering. I'm sure this is some kind of moral imperative for the crystals or the Zepseg. Uh, one who never reproduced, who kept carving itself back to prevent this, is a Zepseg who's not properly giving to the community, right? At least not in the right way. But it could keep up the cycle for some time before it decided to retire and shatter. A Zepseg who is on a different planet from its homeworld might even seek to befriend humans or other races. So when it does shatter and become smaller or less intelligent versions, those humans who cared for the original creature would actually protect and care for its offspring. It wants you to like it so you can take care of it. One final point, since a bigger crystal is smarter, I suggest that these beings would try to grow a super crystal to rule them. It would be immobile, of course, since large crystals are more delicate and more brittle. I'd suggest they grow it underground in a safe cavern. Imagine a crystal brain that was several kilometers across. It would be the most amazing intelligence possible. And of course, it could communicate with this entire planet via radio waves. It might be the only exception to their moral imperative to shatter eventually. They'd keep this going forever to rule them with its wisdom and greatness and to influence other species. Sensitive, electric, and intelligent. For a change, I've made a creature which isn't a terrifying horror. Or at least it doesn't have to be one.